Yo, everybody, welcome to another Lawn Tips live stream. <laughs> Hope everyone was doing well. Let me know if you're here in the chat. Chat away, say good day. Make sure, let me know if everything sounds all right. Um, got a new mic, so hopefully it's going good. The old one was stuffing up. But excited to chat today about um, grass, about life, just answer you guys' questions. Looking forward to have a chat um, and just getting stuck into it. Really, really good. Um, hopefully everyone else isn't getting smashed by the rain at the moment like we have been here. There's been so much rain about lately, like it has been absolutely ridiculous. And more predicted by the look of it, which, you know, if you complain when there's not rain, then rain comes and you complain, so... It's got to suck it up, man. Hopefully the stream's running smoothly as well, because I did see that the internet dropped out like oh, about five minutes ago, so... Let's hope it keeps rolling. Um, so if you guys want to chat, you have to be a member tonight to be in the chat, but you guys can still watch along if you're not a member. If you want to become a member on the YouTube channel, let me show you quickly while we're waiting for people to pop in. If you want to become a member, this is how you do it. So let's just pop to my channel. Um, and let's have a squeeze, bro. Let's have a little squeeze it. Um, here we go. If you look here on my channel just here, you can see there is a join section just here. Not sure if you guys can see that. Um, and on your phone now, I think you can also do it. Otherwise, if you go to this video that we're watching right now, let's click it and see what happens. Make sure the audio is turned down. Um, well, that's a great shot. That is beautiful, bro. Um, if we hit the show more, you can see there's actually a link there. To join the channel, you click it and then... That's the members page. You guys don't want to see that. That's a bit... But anyway, that's what you do to do it. Oh, I want to show you. you got this too. So after my stream, um, Ralphie here is doing a stream as well. So it's his first time we're doing a live stream. So I recommend you guys pop in, say good day. Make sure you check out our man from over in Western Australia, um, Kieran Ralph. Um, mate, live streaming, you're going to love it. It's it's hard. To, it's a bit scary to start off, but you'll smash it, man. You'll smash it. All right, who's here? Ash. Hope you're well, mate. Thank you. Good to hear that the audio is clear. Chris, hope you're well, my man. Matt Birdo, hey, mate. Filled in the trench or is it full of water? <laughs> it's got a bit of water in there. It's not too bad. Luckily, we've had mostly sprinkling over the last the last little bit. Um, but, yeah, I do need to get the, the conduit down and the cable. Um, this weekend, I'm going to dig a hole where we're going to put the, um, the little power box and everything. Um, and I'll concrete that in just with some rapid set or something. And then, mate, we'll be laying cables. Just got to wait. Obviously, I'm not going to be doing it by myself because I'm not a sparky. So I've got my um, brother-in-law helping out, Ollie. Thank you so much, Ollie, for helping out with that. He helps me out with so much stuff, that bloke. He is a skilled man. Um, make sure you guys ask some questions if you want to know anything. Um, we're going to rattle off whatever you guys want to talk about today. Um, we can see a few guys in here. Make sure you say good day if you're a member. Um, and able to write in the live chat because I'm ready. Smash me with some questions, man. I'm ready. I know it's winter and there's not a lot going on, but we can still talk grass. We can talk anything you like. Phil, hope you're well. Hey, mate. Hope the family's all better. Where's best to send photos of an issue with my lawn to? All right. So I'll chat on this. I'll flick it on the screen for you. Let me just get up my chat window. So I would go with um, orders at lawntips.net is the best place to contact me nowadays. Um, and I send some photos there and we can have a squiz. Um, if you send them now, we might even have a look now if you like. It depends if you want to. Um, but always happy to help you guys out where I can and when I get a chance to get to them. Yeah, there you can go. See, it's on the screen now. Beautiful. Uh, I'm not going to do any lawn mowing simulator today. I thought I'd give that a rest. I actually haven't played the game since um, I last did it because I wanted to save it for doing on live streams. But tonight we're just going to answer questions and rip through it. Matt Birdo, play us a tune, mate. <coughs> One day I will. Not today. <laughs> oh dear. One day I will. I'll have to get the um, pedal board plugged into the, the whole computer to make it actually sound decent so you can hear it. Because at the moment, you're not going to be able to hear much. A bit of slapping of strings. Anybody else in here? Anyone? Any other members? Um, 
let's just make sure this isn't let me know if it's smooth too because it keeps telling me on my youtube side here that it is struggling so hopefully it's not internet must be struggling today for some reason elon musk what are you done um well, what can we chat about while we're waiting um Kaiki is still kicking along out the front. I'm actually really surprised how much it's kicked along this year. It's kind of, like, I don't know. I didn't expect it to be this colour still in the middle of June. Generally, your Kaiki would be off and brown by now. Um, oh, where did I leave my phone? I think I left my phone out there. Emma, if you are watching, can you bring my phone in? I just wanted to get a picture up of the, the Tiff Tuff last year at this time just to show people. Lawns by Nick. Welcome to the live stream, my man. Appreciate you. Appreciate you. George. Yo. George, what's happening, mate? Thanks for popping in. Thank you for waiting another night for this live stream to be on. We were supposed to do it last night, but we didn't end up getting to that. Um, Ask some questions, man. I know you want to. I don't know, someone wants to, I know it. If you don't, maybe we'll play a game. Um, And we can chat along the way. That's fine. What's the time? Seven. We've got lots of time. We're cruising for it. Um, what else? What else can we have a chat about? Um, I think plans are going along well for the um. <coughs> excuse me. The plans are going along well for the past three. Um, obviously the next step once we've put down the we've dropped the ball pump into the hole, and we've run the cable up to the house. From there, what we're going to be doing is digging irrigation. So the plans are. I'm either going to use a trench digger, which I may or may not do because. It, with that skiddy um, from the guys at Hutchinson Piers, because it hasn't got tracks and it's just so wet this time of year, and there's a lot of slopes on this property. Like, it's really hard to tell um, on camera, like, how slopey this property actually is. For example, like, from where we sunk the bore up to where the tank is in the path three paddock, that's about 20, 25 meters in elevation. So, there's quite a big drop from there to there. So, but the next step we're going to do is after we sunk the bore, pump and got the electrical going. We're going to, I've spoken to the guys at Hutchin and Piers and they were talking about sending me a, uh, what do they call them? It's like, it's a pipe layer, so it's going to basically rip rip just a line in the ground. You can actually feed the poly down through that. It's like you, you hook it up to the back of your tractor. I can't remember what they're called now for some reason. I've had a mind blank. Um, but yeah, we're going to lay the pipe like that. If We might run into some rock along the way, but we have got the excavator to, to dig that out. I mean, seriously, I'm very, very lucky that those guys contacted me and they've sent me that gear to use and show you guys on the channel. It is awesome. Like, beyond blessed. It's just crazy. Um, yes, yeah, so it is 9 p.m. in NZ. Oof, it would be too. My grandparents were over in New Zealand um, and that's where I was born and I lived there till I was, I think I've told you guys this a million times, but till I was about five or six and mo moved over here to Australia. Been here ever since. How is your golf game going? Yeah, it's. I'm actually playing a little bit more now that it's winter time, which is nice. It's going all right. It's on the on the up. Um, although my handicap's gotten worse because I played comp a couple of weeks ago and shot. <laughs> it was so bad. It's like 21 over par. Like way blew it. My handicap went up to 14. It was at 12. Um, it's just yeah, I had a blowout round. It was frosty that morning though. I was walking on ice, putting on ice greens. Excuses. Silverstone Gardening. How many JHS pedals do you have? Zip. I used to have a few. Um, I used to have their compressor. I used to have the... What's the delay called? The Panther? The There's the Panther Cub that I had. So the smaller version of the the big Panther delay pedal. And I think I had another JHS pedal as well. I used to have a bit of Strymon, a bit of this, a bit of that. I actually sold it all and now I'm using the Helix system. Just because it is so much... More convenient, to be honest. Um, I would like to get another pedal board up and running again, though. I have actually got a little pedal board sitting just there, as you can see. Which is from Tonewood Pedal Boards. Check those guys out on Instagram. Will um, from Tonewood is actually a guy that follows the channel, and he sent me that that pedal, little pedal board there. So I might do a little acoustic um, pedal board setup. We'll see. I love playing acoustic guitar. It's good fun. Been mucking around with different tunings lately. I can't remember what tuning it was. It's like a weird C, G, C, D, A. Something weird, man. It's crazy tuning. It's good fun, though. 
Um, lawns by Nick. Hey, hey, mate, my tiff tough that I put down very late, late March um, in Newey. Got too long and I scalped in some sections. Sounds like what I did when I first got my tiff tough. <laughs> it's very brown now. Anything to do now, wait for spring. No, I just wait for spring, Nick. There's not really much you can do this time of year, but come springtime, it will come back. I mean, you've scalped it now. You pro- you've basically set it up for spring to have a good start to spring. It's just going to look nasty for the next couple of months, unfortunately. Um, but yeah, um, I did. if you go back into some of my old video files, there is a video of me scalping my tiff tuff probably in, it would have been in May, which is just silly. I don't know why I did that. Um, and then it never came back after that. So I did paint it. I remember I did paint it, which is pretty funny. Um, speaking of that, I'm going to, if the kayak here goes dormant, I am going to paint it with some of this stuff back here. I'll show you. Let me grab it. So, there's lawn paint here. So, is it going to focus? Focus, bro. Yeah, there we go. So, that's not up on the website yet. I'll get that up over the next couple of days. Um, Won't do it tomorrow because it's Emma's birthday. So, I'll edit a video and that will probably be the end of work tomorrow. Um, but yeah, I'm keen to actually try that pigment out and see how it looks. Um, And this little bottle here covers up to a thousand square meters. So, it covers quite an area, which is awesome. Very low rate. I mean, if you go high rates, don't do it because it'll make your lawn look ridiculous. Um, but yeah, keen to try that bad boy out. A lot of golf courses actually do that through winter. They'll actually um put a pigment on their greens, sometimes their fairways as well. So you'll see sometimes they've got dormant grass absolutely everywhere. Um, and they've still got bent grass greens, but they'll give their greens a bit of a kick with some pigment just to really make it look a little bit more aesthetically pleasing, I guess, through the winter time. Why not? It sort of hides all the um, the dodgy parts of the green during winter time because that's what happens. Nothing's growing. So that will happen. Um, now where I'm up to. Yo, Aiden, what is happening? Thanks for tuning in, my man. Reese, what is happening, my guy? Long time no see. Is that sarcasm? Awesome, here we go, wets, wets hops, wets, wets hops, <laughs> what's your thoughts on a per- perch water tables, worth the effort, or is it just better to mix some clay through as our soil here in Western Australia is pretty much sand with next to zero water retention, perch water table is a funny one, it's more of an old school way of doing things, um, there's lots of for and against for those. Um, we learned a bit about it at TAFE. I've never actually really had too much experience with a perch water table, to be honest. Um, it's probably not worth doing. It's a lot of effort. Um, I think, did Simon rise to a perch water water table when he was doing his... Um, if you guys know Simon Rice, he used to be on hang around all the Lawn Fanatics pages and stuff. I actually haven't been on those pages for a while because... Um, I haven't been, I don't go on Facebook much, to be honest, um, apart from answering questions and stuff. But yeah, I think Simon Rice did did do something with a perch water table. Um, but if, to be honest, I, I honestly wouldn't bother with it. Um, bit more of an old school way of doing it. You can get away with using things like wetting agents to help retain some water in there, which is something you definitely need to do in WA with your sandy soils. Um, and then promote, obviously, a lot more root growth with something like a liquid kelp that's going to help promote that root growth a lot deeper into your um, subsurface as well. That is the way I would go about it personally. Um, it's a lot of effort, especially for a home lawn. Um, I mean, if you want to do it for the fun of it and it's something that you'd love to try out and a little project, I mean, go for it. But um, I don't. it's not going to make a significant difference, especially in the home lawn. Shane Beckett, my man. Three months of being a member. I appreciate it. Great to see you back. Hope you've been well. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. Hope you've been well also. Um, bit of a weird time of year. It's, it's kind of slow, but busy. Um, I want to jump into shooting two videos a week. I really, really want to. Like, I'm keen. But just the rain, man. It's just sticking around. It makes it hard to do a lot of things. Um, and there's not a lot of lawn mowing going on at the moment because, it's, well, one, it's winter and it's raining, um, and I've got kaiki here now, not ryegrass, which, man, I miss the ryegrass, that stuff, man, I'll tell you what. Phil, I sent those photos through, I didn't see them, sorry, let me just see 
if they pop up on the screen, my guy. E e e e e here we go. Alright, I'll read through this quickly before I flick anything on the screen. Hopefully these photos um, download for us. Alright. Alright. I can see that. Alright, let's get this up on the screen for you guys. So I'll, I'll tell you what, um, what Rick has said. Rick? Was it Rick? Was it the right name? Phil. Oh, I feel it's, there's two people writing to me. <laughs> Who's Rick? Is Rick in the chat? <laughs> or Rick's just having a... Oh, we can look at Rick's as well if you're watching the live stream, Rick. Because um, you guys will find it interesting, I reckon. All right, Phil, here we go. Sorry. My bad. All right. Thinks he might have brown patch in his zoysia. Sprayed it with Impala, but hasn't gotten better. So I'm not sure what it is. I did a light dethatch over the areas to clear out the grass, but it doesn't seem to be getting any better. Wow, what's the photo? Come here, boy. Come here. All right. I'll flick this up on the screen for you guys so you can see it. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Now, let's go. Here we go. So, this is... Ooh, I'm touching the wrong screen. Um, Where do you live, Um, by the way, Phil? I'd love to know. From this here, that purpling just looks like a bit of um damage from the change in season, so the colder air... That's what I'd say. That is there. Is that what's going on? Sorry, me mucking around with the screen again. Um, is that what you're talking about? Or let's have a look at the other photo before I get too excited. I guess. Oh, it's hard, hard to, really hard to tell from those photos. Sorry, mate. Um, what is the climate that you're in? Okay, let's have a look at the live stream and see what you've said. Sorry, I've got like five thousand windows open at the moment. Um, we'll wait for Phil to respond on that one. Um, while we're waiting for Phil to respond, let's just read the chat here and what's going on with it. So, um, George, once irrigation is done, are you going to start the golf course in winter or wait for spring? So once the irrigation is done, which I'm going to, to be honest, we're in June, July, August. That's only two and a half months left. And then we're into spring. So I'm going to, I'm going to guess that the irrigation is probably going to take me at least close to the end of winter. Um, and once the irrigation's in, there's not really much. I could probably start shaping the green and doing the subsurface, yeah, 100%, and start bringing some soil in, some sand, and doing that. So that would probably be um, the go for sure. So I think, yes, definitely. If everything goes according to plan, which I reckon it will, speak it out. Um, we'll, yeah, we'll be stuck into it, which is awesome. Grant, how's the trench going? Not filling up with water. I think I already reply to that but no it's not <laughs> um chris e had an incident the other day mixed 100 mil of seaweed secrets and 100 mil of activate mate in a jug all good put some special effects yeah and it erupted out of the jug into a foamy mess on the floor any ideas why so that'd be the activate mate and the special effects um reacting with each other so generally with that activate product you any liquid iron that you mix with it um tends to just make it go foamy and makes it like a real sludgy mess. So just don't mix those two together and that will help you out there. All right, Alex, let's read your question, my guy. Alex is saying, I finally get to I finally get to be in another one of these lives. Awesome, man. I'm used to this soccer training, but COVID got me good. Oh, at least you get to watch the live stream. <laughs> Dang, man. Um, are you still thinking of trialing some different grasses on your property? 100% my man. I'm definitely be, I'm trialing different different types of grass, um, some zoysia, buffalo, somewhere. I don't know where I'm going to put it, but um, yeah, we will definitely put in some different grass types in there as much as we can. Um, I'm going to do some trial plots as well out in the, the bigger paddock, um, get some just irrigation running there, do some trials with some products on those areas there as well. There's going to be lots going on. I'm, I'm keen to get stuck into it. It's going to be great. It's going to be awesome. Um, all right, Phil, let's get back to you. Brisbane came off the rain at the start of the year. Okay, I probably just need some more. F oh, did you send me another photo? I think I might have missed the last photo, sorry. Ah, oh, here we go. There we go, man. So, to me, to me at the moment, it, it looks... Such an odd pattern. You didn't scalp it by any chance, did you? After it rained, did it get really long after the rain? 
and you did a, a mow that sort of cut off more than you normally would by any chance. Um, man, I just can't... Like, there's purple there, but apart from that, there's not really much else going on. I mean, your, your blade's a little bit blunt on your mower. You can see by the um, frayed edges there. Um, has it got any worse? That's one question. I'm, I'll, I'll tell you what, it will improve on spring kicks. I have no doubt about that. It looks like you've knocked it, though. If it's not spreading... You're going to be okay. It's probably, since it is zoysia, it is going to take a while to come back as well. But if it's at the start of the se- at the start of the year, man, it's not ideal. I just wonder if you accidentally scalped it, but it's hard to know, man, because it's pretty old. Like when, when diseases first come up, it's a lot easier to identify them. Once they're sort of turned into a bit of scarring like it has here, it is really hard to, to identify. And at the best of times, I'm not the best with identifying disease if I don't know a lot about it. Only the ones I've had a lot of experience with and seen in person, like, and a lot of them are different to what they are up in, on the coast and in Queensland as well, because we get, we get a lot more things like Fusarium, Dollar Spot, which you guys get as well. I've seen a bit of anthracnose around. I've seen um, a bit of Helmo, Black Helmo, White Helmo, Spring Dead Spot, um, Brown Patch. I've seen some brown patch. I had some brown patch on some fescue I had at one point. Um, what else have I seen? Uh, quite a few other diseases, but I still haven't seen all of them, obviously. Like, there's that many out there. Or maybe I have. I just didn't recognize them. <laughs> Who knows? But, yeah, it can get confusing with disease. But it looks like you've knocked it, though, man. Um, please let me know if that gets worse. Or flick me an email if you have any more questions about that as well. Because I am more than happy to help you out. Um, but to me, it looks like... You've either you're on top of it and it just need to repair a bit more, which something like um, some of that roots product that I have on my website or that survival, something with like some liquid kelp would help speed that along and probably a liquid fertilizer like Brilliance um, wouldn't be a bad option as well. Just get some microbes working in that soil to push that tiny bit of growth. It's just hard because zoysia is so slow growing, so sometimes it can make it a bit tricky. Um, all right, let's keep going on these questions. Um Chris E mixed with water, it was fine. Was this with your explosion mix? Oh, well, that's good. It's good to fix it up. Um, Alex, I'm in Taz, and your climate is relevant for us. Hundred percent, it is. Yeah, it's very similar. Um, which is very rare when I'm looking up info. Yeah, I think I'm probably one of the only guy, or only guy in Australia that has a climate like this that would relate with you um although brenton is sort of similar he's a little bit warmer though um doesn't get snow either <laughs> so like a dog brenton is the aussie lawn by the way guys if you're wondering who that is uh, it started small then it spread okay sorry phil i didn't see that that's good to know so it definitely wasn't scalping sorry i was just guesstimating away there um anybody else got any questions we flew through those which is good What's the time? 7.20. Cool. Beautiful. Um, feel free to ask anything you like. Um, but we'll wrap it up. We'll wrap it up in the next 10 to 15 minutes unless the questions keep flying through. Um, it's, it's, it's a funny time of year. I always find when you do live streams in winter, you don't get as many questions because people aren't out on the lawn as often and aren't really thinking about as much which honestly that makes sense like it's that time of year and i mean i I still think about grass all year round it's it is my job as well but i still love it especially around the golf course you're around grass all the time like it's just something i love um george any update on your brother's lawn so Josh, I'm guessing you're talking about with his Tiff Tough. Um, I do actually need to go shoot a video there. I'm planning on actually do it, shooting a video there when he does his next renovation just to show you guys how it's looking and how we do a reno on the cooch on the cooch grass. That's if we're not going gangbusters with the grass here, of course. That's just a backup plan. But I will do an update video or at least some photos on Facebook or Instagram or something for that. Um, but it's going well. It's it's setting into dormancy now because we're in winter, but it's nice and filled in, really, really good colour. I did a post, post a photo on Facebook. I think it was in January, Facebook and Instagram. Um, but yeah, 
It's going good. It's going really good. Josh is really happy with the Tiff Tuff. Tiff, man, and I love the Tiff Tuff here in our climate in Orange. Like, it is just awesome grass. It is just aggressive stuff, but it is so good, especially because it's a bit cooler here. Like, Coochie isn't as aggressive in Orange as it is, say, in Brisbane or something like that because we don't have the humidity. We're a lot drier, like dry heat. We don't have humid air. Um, and then, obviously, the wintertime drops, as you guys can imagine. A silver stone at gardening, Luke. What are you saying? What's your plan with plants? You mentioned in a vid you wanted to make some gardens, 100%. So, as I've told you guys before, I'm not a gardener. Um, I'd love to be. I'd love... Because I do love plants. I just need to do more research and learn more. But it's something I want to get more involved in. Um, I'm not really sure, to be honest, mate. I'm... I've had a few guys offered to help out in that region. I'm probably going to reach out to them in the future um, once things kick off. But, I mean, behind the green, I want to do something sort of similar to Augusta with the azaleas. Um, like it is there at Augusta behind, is it the 13th um, green, I think, there? Beautiful looking spot. I just I want to add some colour to the, to the property. Um, not just trees, but I want to add some colour with some annuals and some... Some nice looking flowers and a bit of this and a bit of that. Some shrubs here and there. I just want the place looking schmick. Like, especially in springtime and autumn time. Like, I want it just to be popping. So, I think with the trees and then you add some more colour on top of that, the whole place is just going to be looking magic. Really, really looking forward to it. Now, obviously, this is going to take quite a long time. But, you know, it doesn't matter. More videos. Grant, how is the spray lawn going at your mate's place? So, that's at my brother and sister-in-law's house which is actually across the road believe it or not i should legit just walk down there one day and show you guys how it's going now it's obviously starting to lose a bit of color now because we're going into winter but no it's going good um it does need a bit of a renovation it probably needs a bit of a core aeration a bit of an overseed because we did get a bit of a dry spell there and they didn't keep the water up to it continually but that allowed the kentucky bluegrass that was mixed in there to take over a little bit more as well did get a bit of kaiku coming up in it um, and a bit of cooch, they weren't, honestly, they weren't too worried about that at all, as long as there's some grass there and it's filled in, it's fine, but, yeah, it's, it's going good, um, it probably just needs a reno to get it looking pristine, if you know what I mean. Adam Wilkins, hey mate, do you, th what do you think of, prote is it protozine products, I actually have, I don't think I've ever used them before, I've never heard of them, protozine, Pro protozine, I'm great with, uh, with spelling stuff, me, <laughs> I mean pronouncing stuff. Chris E, did you get much thatch on the Tiff Tough? Mine is shocking. So I've heard this. It depends on your climate and where you live and how, what your fertilizer program is like as well. So you sort of got to be careful with your application rates of fertilizer. Um, sometimes you need to back it up off to about half rate with products that have a little bit higher nitrogen. So if you're applying something that has a high N, like twenty eight, I don't know, ten. 15 i'm just making it up off the top of my head i don't think there's any fertilizer that has that um but if you had something like that you'd probably need instead of going two kilos per hundred square meters i'd bump it back to one kilo just to stop that thatch build up because there's enough gibberellic acid production in the tiff tough you do not need to um, over fertilize that stuff like it doesn't need to be fed like crazy um it might even be worth just sticking to liquids and sticking on a monthly a monthly program with that for a little while if you're getting super super crazy thatch issues and making sure you're mowing very regularly um if you can groom it if you can't maybe give it a scalp two times a season just to keep on top of it because yeah in humid climates tiff tough can be very very aggressive so that's probably why you're struggling with it um even if you're similar to where i am but you get a bit more humidity and your night temps a little bit higher you'll find it'll have the same issue as well um, whoa, 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 whoa. I'm using 20 kilo. Oh yeah, stop it building up. Oh, I so you got a battery mower, so it's probably a little bit light for your tiff tough as well. Yeah, that it makes sense. Um, George, when doing a tall fescue reno, how short do you cut it when you want to level it out? So, I've tested this before. I've cut it down nearly to dirt in the past. I think I the lowest I got was around would have been five nearly five mil like i was cutting into dirt at some point some areas of it um and it comes back fine believe it or not it does take a lot longer um 
and sometimes it can come back a little too a little bit clumpy if you do like scalp it to dirt absolutely everywhere um, but if you do decide to over sow with that reno as well it's not going to be an issue at all generally i like to do an over sow when you're doing renovation on tall fescue anyway because it's not a self-repairing grass type even if you had like the rtf it's still not going to repair enough that it's going to really thicken it up um so yeah you can go but you can go low man that's fine like and don't take it down step by step by step when you're doing the reno just scalp it man just scalp it down to nothing it's going to look like crappy for a little bit but it'll be worth it 100 percent um ash yo mate any advice for killing moss besides moss killer from bunnings um iron sulfate which you can get at bunnings as well um is actually a really good way to do it it sort of dries it out quite quickly and you'll see results within a couple of days works really really well um all right see if we've got anything else going on here So I'll just quickly, Richard sent me some photos, so I thought you guys would find this interesting. So let's chuck this on this screen here. I'm just reading an email, sorry, on the other screen. So you can see here, Richard has... Oh, my goodness. What are you doing? <laughs> Wrong screen. So he's told me that he's sewed down some kai Now, from that photo that I can see there, I can see a lot of ryegrass. Um, I'm going to read this. So I'm guessing it was a mix of kai and some ryegrass in there. Um, that's tend to what, generally what happens when you sow down Kai Q, if you buy your seed from somewhere like Bunnings or like your local hardware store that you'll find, they normally mix a bit of annual ryegrass, sometimes some perennial ryegrass in there. Um, excuse me. So he's just asking what's this disease. That is some fusarium. You've got some fusarium there. So I'm not sh actually sure what's available in New Zealand to help you get rid of that, mate. But, um... You can give it a little bit of aeration to help dry it out a bit because fusarium normally, normally comes around when you get um, leaf wetness for a long period of time. So aeration might help out, maybe raking a bit of the dead stuff out of there. Um, but that is definitely winter fusarium, which is very common this time of year, especially when you're getting a lot of rain or you get a bit of snow. I think in America they call it snow mold. Um, but yeah, very, very common this time of year when it's just wet and doesn't dry out. Like we used to find we used to get it quite a bit on our golf greens. Um, on the golf course and especially on like the second cut of the apron whatever you want to call it um just because the grass is a little bit longer and it used to hold a little bit more moisture because it wasn't not that half our greens where i worked for a long time were sand anyway there were a lot of clay in them um but yeah that's what it is mate um george thanks we'll get there one day just need torfescu to grow first yeah that's fair man that is fair. Oh, that's right. I do remember you saying that you need to get it going. Oh, so when you do... Yeah, sorry. You've got very young fescue. That's right, at 90 mil. So you want to squeeze it down bit by bit. Yeah, once it's a bit more mature and it's got a thicker blade, that's when you can start scalping it back. Um, but 100%, I'd drop it from 90, maybe down to 75. 75 down to 50. Just, just muck around with it. But when it is younger too, you actually can cut it. Like, not, I'm not saying scalp, but you can cut it down from, like, 90 to 50, and it shouldn't really cause too many issues when it's a lot younger because the crowns aren't quite as thick and juicy. Um, any suggestions for products to drop soil pH in Zoysia? Soil pH is a hard one. Um, yeah, sulfur is one way you can do it. It's going to take a long time, though, with using sulfur. Um, I used to use a product called anti-alk, anti-alk, anti-alk. Um, which I think the guys at Amgro sell that, which can alter your pH. That's one way that's a little bit quicker to drop it. Um, but yeah, and I've heard you can use organic soils and stuff to help with your pH levels as well. But it's always, the thing is like changing pH can be a hard thing. Taking it up is pretty easy, but bringing it back down is the, is the problem. Um, I'd highly recommend you get a soil test done. Um, and then you can normally get, once you get your soil test done, you'll get actually recommendations of what to apply, how much to apply, at what rates per time you hear from the guys that do the soil test as well. So it might be a good option to look at something like that if your pH is really, really out of whack. Um, beautiful. Well, well, we'll wrap it up in, let's give it three more minutes. Ask some questions now as you, as you want, guys, and then we'll wrap this bad boy up. Um, and we'll do a live stream in the next week or two. We'll do it when we do it, but 
<laughs> I won't say the next week or two because it ends up being about a month later. But um, well, I'll let you guys know when the next live stream comes out. We might do a bit of a bit of a lawn mowing simulator again or something along those lines for a bit of fun. On top of that as well, I might even do one during the day um, if we've got a rainy day and I can't get outside and shoot a video just for the fun of it. Um, but flick through your questions now just before I wrap it up. But I appreciate you guys so much for tuning in tonight. Um, I hope everyone is surviving this cold and this rain well. Um, it's I can understand why the guys in the UK like can get a little bit down in the winter time because over there, how overcast it is. Like the way it's been here recently, like it's a bummer when you can't get outside and do things. Like it's like I wouldn't say it's depressing, but it's just yeah, it's not more fun. I love getting outside and doing things. I do miss it. All right, we'll wrap it up. No more questions looking through. Oh, where's Schnitty? He's probably out sleeping on the couch. Um, all right, thanks, guys, so much for watching. appreciate you guys. Um, yeah, I'll see you guys, obviously, in Saturday's video. We'll chat there. See you.